We've got a, an academic approach to simulation training in that we know what simulation can do. So what we start off with is we do a diagnostic assessment on the individual. Um, we use a combination of either uh, models that we set up in simulation coupled to the Dover uh, psychomotor assessments or the Vienna psychomotor assessments. Should we identify that a learner falls short of the various sub-elements of, of assessment, in, in the Dover or Vienna assessments. Then we move straight on to um, rehabilitation training. We've got a rehabilitation toolkit. But where we really, um, I could say, are the trendsetters in simulation is how we map the uh, learner's deficiencies, psychomotor deficiencies, to the simulation exercises and modeling. So that at the end of the day, you can score proficiencies of the individual coming out of the simulated learning environment across health and safety, machine uh, appreciation and productivity. The simulation has reduced firstly uh, cycle training times dramatically. Um, also it allows for interaction under simulated conditions between the instructor and the learner which is absolutely paramount when you think of how this is accomplished in the absence of, of simulation in a workplace environment. So what, what, it, what it's really meant for us is it's re reduced cycles. I believe in my opinion that it's been a production enhancement tool as well. Um, I've, I've received a lot of favorable comments from um, you know, the various project executives that sit with me on the executive committee. So yes, um, that is what I could say in short uh, are some of the improvements that we've noticed. What we enjoy is actually having a final report, a proficiency scorecard, which we are able to communicate to supervisors. So supervisors can have first-hand knowledge of how these operators are going to operate in the workplace and you know, sort of gauge out what are the areas of supervision that need to be considered to ensure that production, safe production, prevails at the end of the day. So, um, that's, that's how we believe simulation is, is absolutely something to have in a training environment. We can only be really thankful now that we have simulation because how it was done prior to us having this type of technology remains really um, risky uh, to us because I just don't believe that operators were able to get the due attention while learning to operate machines in the absence of simulation in a mock-up environment and even in the workplace. Because you know, if you really look at the safety factors and, and, and also the, the, the rental of machines and the damage of the machines and the maintenance of the machines, most training centers just by the way don't have machines. And that's why simulation is absolutely key for any training center that's providing uh, mechanized training to consider. Um, coming back to the cycle times, I recall the days when we used to get basic entry level proficiency from an operator in weeks. I'm talking three or four weeks. Now with simulation, you're able to cut it at least by 50%. But what's nice is you're able to see that the proficiency of the learner okay, is much more impressive than what it was previously. You know, you will always be at the mercy of the hand of an assessor. Now you've got a machine. You can't bribe the simulator, but you can bribe an assessor. So I just feel when you collect all this evidence towards a summative assessment, simulation really just peaks above everything else.